episode, Chart Watchers and Decision Point Faithful. Welcome to this Monday, October 4th, 2021 episode of Decision Point. My name is Erin Swenlin from DecisionPoint.com, and I am here with my father, Carl Swenlin, also from DecisionPoint.com. How's everything going for you, Dad? Very good. I'm happy that we have a, a next exciting day to talk about. Yes, we definitely do. Last week was pretty exciting as well, and it looks like we're on par to have another exciting show with lots to cover. So I'm going to get right into it. We have our spy and indicator overview coming up from Carl. He's going to take a really good in-depth look at what's going on in the market right now. We did get a new intermediate term trend model neutral signal on the spy. That means that the 20 day EMA crossed below the 50 day EMA. And we'll talk about the implications of that. Then uh, the question is, is there any new sector strength? I say new sector strength because XLE continues to outshine the rest, still looking very bullish, but I've been watching to see if we're finding any strength anywhere else. And so I'll go through a little bit of what I'm watching and what I'm seeing out there. We'll delve into a few of the ener energy industry groups so that we can see um, looking at them separately, which ones are showing the best relative strength. But I have to say, when I look at all of those industry groups and energy, they are all bullish right now. You know, it was funny, hmm? if I might interrupt, is that just the day uh, OPEC announced that they were going to increase their production and oil went up anyway. <laughs> yes, yes. So it's just, yeah, going crazy. Absolutely. Um, and then I'm going to cover two diamonds of the week that I think are interesting. One is kind of running right now, but I think it has more upside to go. And the other one I think looks really interesting from the energy sector that uh, you should take a look at. So we'll, we'll review that as well. All right. Without further ado, I'm going to pass it over to you, Dad. But before I get your screen up, I do want to remind everybody that on Mondays, at noon, I do have a free live trading room. We had one this morning. Mark Young from wallstreetsentiment.com was our guest. And it's a very active room. I take your symbol requests. We look at questions that you have. And we can delve into some of those uh, positions you might have in your portfolio just to get a, a fresh perspective. So if you'd like to register for that, just go to the decisionpoint.com website. You'll see my picture and the trading room advertisement there. Just click on it and it'll take you directly in to register for that free trading room. All right, now you can have the screen. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> um, today, um, I wanna start out with a little bit of inside baseball. It was a large cap uh, down day. Small caps were down as well, but not nearly as much as the, the really big stocks. Uh, beginning with Apple, Apple was down, um, just got something in the way here. Apple was down uh, two and a half percent, and uh, it actually had a, a, a downside crossover of the 20 uh, of the 50. But what I was trying to get at here is that Dow went down 0.94%. Uh, and uh, the S&P was down 1.29%. That's almost 40% more than the Dow went down today. And uh, the reason is uh, Apple. In the, in the S&P 500, it is cap weighted. So being the largest cap stock in the entire world, it obviously carries a lot of weight there. And in the uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average, it's uh, which is arithmetically weighted, it's a rather small stock in terms of its price. And uh, in fact, it's about half of the price of the top four uh, stocks in, in the Dow Industrials. And uh, which means it doesn't carry near as much weight as it does in the Dow as it does in the S P five hundred. 
moving right along, I said it was a down, a, a down day for uh, large cap stocks. And here's another demonstration of it. Uh, here I keep a list of cap weighted and um, equal weighted indexes. Uh, the NASDAQ 100, you can see where the large cap, uh, the, the cap weighting uh, made it go down more than the equal weight index. And the same is true for the S&P 500. It's went down equal weighted. It only went down half what the, uh, the cap weighted index did. And then we have rather small down days. In fact, the equal weight uh, small cap index was up over half a percent today. And uh, that's, uh, I would say that's a positive uh, issue because normally when everything heads south, the smaller cap stocks uh, just lead the way. Now, this is only one day, but it's something to keep an eye on and keep in mind. So let me go back and look at the uh, SP 500 through the SPY. Uh, first of all, today we had a downside crossover um, of the 20 through the 50 EMA. That changes us from a buy to a neutral on uh, the SP 500. Also, we notice we've got pretty good support right along here. Uh, we had intraday penetration for two days in a row, but this closing above that line uh, has been tested four times and it's closing above it uh, every time. We had a lot of expanded volume on the, on the SPY volume, and we actually did have a, a expanded volume on, on the um, S&P 500 total volume. VIX is still not getting too scary, even intraday when it was down pretty good. Uh, it, did, it did not touch the line of the, the lower Bollinger Band here. Vast decline lines are still holding up and they're basically confirming, the, 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 the advanced decline line is confirming what we've seen in price. Uh, the advanced decline volume line is uh, diverging negatively. The Silver Cross Index today, again, reflecting um, large cap weakness versus the smaller cap. Oh, I'm sorry, we're looking at, that's not the one I wanted to look at, but yeah, the NASDAQ Composite, New York Stock Exchange Composite, and the SP 500 all tick down today. And here, the this is what I was looking for. To begin with, was the we still a tick down on the, the SP 500 Silver Cross inject tick down again today. But these are uh, the small cap has been moving up since the middle of last month, and as well as the mid cap. It's uh, had a little dip down here, but it's it's uh, actually a, a positive divergence on this double bottom. So you can see the smaller cap stocks, mid and small cap, are uh, still kind of strong. Our climax assessment. Uh, I was thinking we were going to have a climax today. We did have an expansion of total volume, but that's that's all. Mm. That's all we got. Yeah, I was the, looking for that too. I was wondering what we would end up with today. Right, and here's the other one we, you know, the other biggie we look for is the up-down volume ratio, and it's well below uh, the th uh, three, which is our arbitrary uh, threshold of it being climactic. Before you leave that chart, I did want to look at that VIX a little bit as well. With Mark Young in the room this morning, we really did talk a lot about sentiment and his feeling and mine, honestly, when I see a VIX like we're seeing 
is we don't have enough bearish sentiment right now. He said that uh, you know the Twitter sphere is still very bullish, and you know seeing a VIX not puncture that lower Bollinger band. I mean, we really want to see that to really give us that signal that we could be looking at a short-term bottom. But I, it's just surprising to me to see those ratios weren't extended and the VIX is staying beneath that EMA on that inverted scale and not puncturing that lower band, which is usually our signal that we're going to get a reversal. Yeah, and I, it's, yeah, we, uh, before this uh, market top, we were getting a lot of people looking for a decline. I thought, well, it's getting kind of bearish, the sentiment, but you're right. Technically, that, that's, that's a good sign that it's not very bearish. And I didn't talk about it uh, when I had the six month chart, but we have a, a, a falling wedge formation here. And that's a bullish formation. Let me, I'll just zip back and. <laughs> right. Yeah, I spent some time on that in the trading room as well. And we normally expect that to, to break up to the upside out of this formation. It's not guaranteed, but that's that's what the odds are. So the fact that we is trying to sell, do some selling here, but it's not really breaking down in a big time way. What do we got? Uh, total decline so far is a measly six oh. percent. <laughs> You'd think the sky was falling. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let me move to our indicators, short-term indicators, what I'm looking for. Okay, pretty, hmm. not, this is getting oversold. The, the breadth, swim on trading oscillator breadth is, is a pretty oversold based on its uh, history uh, for, for what this period shown here. It's about a year, yeah. And uh, these uh, these indicators haven't updated. Mm. Let's look at the intermediate term indicators. ITBM and ITVM um, still have a nice uh, positive divergence on the ITVM. And uh, actually, this is a double bottom here, so that's a positive divergence on the on the ITBM, the breadth. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, if you turn it, if you could go back to that short term um, chart, sure. Um, you know, you you mar mark those positive divergences there, but what do you think of the ones that are on here? Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Um, actually, I've got a green dotted line, which is supposed to mark the most recent down uh, low, the most recent low for looking for a bottom. So it should be over, uh, it should be on today. And yes, we have a lower low here and we have higher lows here. So positive versions, and I should mark that up. Oh, yeah. Um, I won't do it now, but... No. <laughs> Um, for those of you interested, so Carl does our annotations for our website. So all of our chart lists that are available on the website, you'll see his annotations in real time because this one will be updated um, shortly in that uh, chart list that we have. Okay, so let's move on to Bitcoin. Yes, what are you thinking here? Uh, it's uh, looked like we had a similar but smaller formation to this one. Uh, last week it broke out of it, and I de-emphasized that uh, rounded top. Let's say, let's keep in mind it could broaden out here and we get a, another a double top or something like that. But for now, uh, this this rounded top has been busted and uh, uh, probably going higher. I'm going to go to the 10 year before I go to the gold. 
last week we had what was looking like a, a flag formation forming, uh, but what we ended up with uh, on Friday was it broke down out of that flag. And it's, it's really just a, uh, a snap back towards the point of breakout, which is a normal technical reaction. And what we should expect to see this uh, price index moving higher after this settles out how far it's going to go down here. Yeah, the PMO really didn't sustain much damage on that pullback too, so. No, not really. Well, it's it got down to a five, minus five. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's look at gold. Gold is coming to life, it looks like. Absolutely. We've got a, got a double bottom here. We have the double bottom on the PMO. PMO has turned up, hasn't crossed the signal line yet, but yeah, this this might be it, finally. <laughs> have people talking about how gold, how Bitcoin is much better uh, than gold uh, as a store of value. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know about that. Just, no, I mean, it's Bitcoin has no intrinsic value. You can make rings out of gold. <laughs> right. Okay, and now let's look at, are we getting help from uh, the dollar? Yes, we are. It is pulling back. Now, we had a rising wedge formation. As expected, it broke down out of that wedge, and then it just started moving higher again. And it's broken above this uh, resistance line, and it snapped back to it. So maybe it's going to continue higher. Uh, so let's have a second thought on how gold, how well gold is is uh, doing. You want to see the miners? I know. Uh, absolutely. I have moved the volume scale down below, since <laughs> it's usually in here interfering with what the price is doing. <laughs> um, we have, let's see, do we have any, uh, we don't really have any div positive differences, but all these indicators are really deeply oversold and uh, waiting for uh, gold to firm up, which is doing, and hopefully the, the, once that, if it continues higher, we'll get the same kind of uh, action in the miners. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm struggling to trust this rally in the gold miners. I, we've been. You can see all the fake outs uh, over and yes. over. <laughs> yes. yeah. So I don't yeah. know. Uh, for me, it's gonna. I need some a lot more improvement on those participation indicators before I will even give it a second thought. You know what? Uh, let's while we're here, let's look at the. Um, okay, the PMO has turned up. That's a good sign. I mean, that's that's as early as you would, you know, based on my opinion, that is you would want to go in. Other people have other methodologies, of course. <laughs> okay. Uh, moving on to uh, oil. Um, it's in a rising trend channel. Again, it's got a line drawn across this these tops, and that's a line of resistance, which it overcame, moved back to, and it's moved away. Now, um, assuming it stays in this channel, it needs to come back down some more, so maybe we'll see some stalling on that. Treasuries. Hmm. Uh, I don't like it. <laughs> no, that's a, that's a reverse flag. Exactly. Yeah, so, um, yeah, that's, that's, they're going to go lower. So we're looking at rising rates, folks. Mm hmm I lost that last week. We did lose the silver cross, that 20 cross below the 50, kind of uh, setting the stage, I think. Yes, yes. Okay, I think that wraps it for me. 
All right, let's go ahead and start looking um, for possible strength in the sectors. You know, it's been clearly um, momentum has been shifting downward for nearly every single sector. Um, financials was showing signs of life, um, but getting beat back down again, possibly with rising rates, we might see a little bit more um, we might see that bounce off of that 50 day EMA for financials, but you can see the PMO, the momentum basically has shifted lower. All of these sectors, healthcare, all of these are showing declining PMOs, but we do have a few bright spots that seem to be coming to life here. So I'll skip energy for now because really energy is still looking pretty good. Um, they definitely getting close to some overhead resistance. We looked at that oil chart, so that could put a little bit of a damper on what's going on in that energy sector. Aaron, Staples. Hmm? Uh, well, I wanted to mention that technology is the next uh, um, sector that's going to lose the buy signal. The 20 is going to pass down through the 50, probably tomorrow. Yeah. Unless there's a heck of a rally. Yeah. And, uh, that'll put it in neutral. And, you know, looking under the hood for technology, we still have quite a bearish bias. You know, our silver cross is at about 41%. And you can see the amount of stocks with price above their 20 and 50 is much lower meaning that it's going to be very difficult to see that silver cross finally turn itself back up. I mean, we have oversold participation readings right now, but when I look at this price chart, I see a trip down to this support level. I just don't think that that will be avoided for technology. It's weak and getting weaker. Yes. So energy, as I noted, is still doing very well. It's hit overhead resistance, so we could end up seeing a pullback here. But ultimately, we had a really nice bull flag going into this breakout. I suspect that we're going to still see the breakout here. And if the bull flag is correct, we'll get a nice move about the height of this flagpole from that breakout point. So we should definitely see higher prices here for energy. It's very, very overbought. I think that's been the real concern among a lot of people. Um, but you look back here from December to um, around March, June, you can see that we've had a silver cross that sat at 100% for quite some time, weeks and weeks. So we know that these overbought conditions can persist over time. And you can see how it's just outperforming so well. But where are some possibilities out there? Well, I noted that materials are starting to look a little bit better here. We still don't have rising momentum yet, and we still don't have a silver cross that's turning back up, but we're starting to see a little bit of a bullish bias in the short term with 25% above their 20-day EMA. We really want to see a much higher number. Certainly, we want to see a higher number on the percent of stocks above their 50. That's required. We need to be above both the 20 and the 50 in order to get a silver cross. And so at this point, we could maybe see a little bit of uh, impact here in the short term. But overall, it's, it's still weak, but it's finding support. So I think that's interesting. I noticed on XLU today that the PMO has flattened, could be turning up. Um, we have a pretty decent bounce right now off of that 200-day EMA and this support level back here to that June-July low. You know, it's it has promise, but I look under the hood and I'm I'm not just like with gold miners. I'm not seeing a heartbeat just yet. We're not seeing price above 20-day EMAs or even 50-day EMAs in utilities. It has a lot of work to do. And you got to look at the fact that utilities. Are, are depending upon the price of energy. And energy, uh, everything that's being done is, is guaranteeing the cost of energy is going to go higher. Which will not be good. Uh, in the utilities, no. XLI was another area that I was watching to see if we could get some new strength. It's just, we're still just not seeing it. Energy is still the place to be. And so consequently, that's where my diamonds of the week are coming from. Really quick, I'll just show you how you can take a peek at those energy industry groups. 
If you come over here to that sector summary, I'm gonna click on energy and here are your industry groups. And one of the ways I just quickly get a pulse on what's happening in those groups is I just hover over the symbol and it gives you a, a good look. Coal is certainly the biggest outperformer. It's broken out, it's continuing higher. Exploration and production, same thing, broke above that overhead resistance level that we're looking at on XLE. Oil equipment and services taking a little longer to get to, to find its legs, but we have what looks like a complex reverse head and shoulders or certainly a rounded bottom. I would expect to see prices move higher on that. Pipelines are getting ready to test overhead resistance, but also looking very healthy and integrated oil and gas. You gotta love it. Um, really, they're just all um, breaking out and looking pretty healthy. So I did bring two possible diamonds of the week and I told you one was a runner and it is right now. Coal is the place to be. I presented Arch Coal last week to my subscribers and um, I presented HCC. If it wasn't this last week, it was the week before because about a week and a half, two weeks ago, I was telling my subscriber about coal and how we were starting to see a rebound off of the pullback. And you can see that's what's happened with Warrior Met. It's got a PMO buy signal that just came in today little concerned about an RSI that's overbought because typically that hasn't been um, the best place to get in on this particular stock when it gets overbought, but I think we still have at least a week uh, or two where it can stay in that overbought conditions. Look also here at the under the hood, stochastics are rising strongly, not overbought. And of course you can see that outperformance right now of the group and of HCC against the SPY is just really, really strong. The other one I brought is LPG, pretty sure that's the one, Dorian. Now this one has been in kind of a go nowhere pattern, right? It's, it's really just been in a trading range most of the last eight months. I believe this is an eight month period, maybe six. Um, but I think that it's still got some move, room to run higher in oil equipment services. In this case, RSI is positive and not overbought. You can see the new PMO buy signal that came in just recently. Nice flag formation right here and the breakout from that flag. I think the one thing I don't like about price today is that long uh, wick on a candlestick. Uh, if we had the candlestick up here, you'd see that. So that would be one of my things that I'm not really thrilled about with the chart, but that's just, um, you know, it could just be that functional pullback after the breakout as well. You can see that it is certainly outperforming the S&P the group itself, oil equipment and services, is also outperforming the S&P. And this one, relatively speaking, is performing about as well as its industry group, which is just fine. And you can see it's certainly been outperforming the SPY, as I noted earlier. So those were the two I'm bringing for Diamonds of the Week. And that really brings us to the conclusion of the show. Any parting uh, words for everybody? Uh uh, good trading. <laughs> yes, good trading, happy trading. Um, keep uh, that portf portfolio protected. I recommend stops for sure right now. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.